And we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth segment, which is going to be talking about someone I have wanted to talk about on the show for a little while now, which is one of my favorite players in baseball, um, just with how he's been playing and you know how good he is, Mason Wynn. I love this guy. I really wanted to talk about him for a little while now, and finally got the opportunity to do so. Last night had a huge go-ahead home run for the for the St. Louis Cardinals, um, you know, uh, in the in extra innings for them, ended up winning the game for them. So that was very very exciting and gave me excuse to talk about Mason Wynn, one of the uh, youngest players in the MLB, breaking out this year and finally living up to his potential. So yeah, let's let's get into that. So Mason Wynn was a guy who was a top prospect throughout the throughout the Cardinals farm system throughout the past few years. Was always known as a defense first guy. We've, if, um, you, if you're a baseball fan, you've probably seen the clips of him throwing a baseball 90 miles per hour from the shortstop position to first base all over the diamond. I mean, his arm strength is absolutely incredible. He's a slick, slick fielder. Draws a lot of comparisons to another Cardinal shortstop, Ozzie Smith, with how clean he is uh, defensively. But this, you know, we always expected him to be a top defender at whatever level he is in. Um, obviously, in the MLB now, so we always expect him to be one of the best defenders in the league. But Finally has brick broken out really with that with that bat and has done absolutely incredible in that way. So yeah, I did want to talk about it and just give my two cents on Win and going over him. So one of the things that is interesting with him was that going into the season he did end up saying that he wanted to make a lot we wanted to make a hard contact more consistently, wanted to hit the ball much harder, really and I mean obviously I'd agree with that. I mean um Every single person in MLB should try to hit the ball as hard as you can. That's how you get runs. That's how you get home runs, which is the most important thing. So, obviously, it makes a lot of sense. And you know, starting off the season, he hadn't really done that. He only made hard. He only had a hard bid percentage of twenty six point three, which isn't horrible, but also isn't exactly what you want. I mean, it's not great. It's definitely not something where you go out and say, "Wow, that's really incredible." I mean, last year it was thirty five, so definitely lower than last year. But in the last sixty eight appearances. Uh, he has at a plate. It's been 43.2. Has very much improved on that. Is showing growth throughout the season. He's developing like a young prospect is supposed to do. I feel like whenever MLB fans, a lot of the time, mainly big market ones, see a prospect come up and hear all these great things about him, they expect him to be this immediate slugger right away, this great player. And when he struggles a little bit or is still developing or isn't playing the best, they're like, oh man, this guy's a bust. Please move on from him. We don't have time to do this. Um, and I think that's not right. You have to let a young player fully develop. And even with Win not hitting the best this year, their support never wavered. They never sent him down. You know, he had a he had a 29 weighted runs created plus last year, which is obviously absolutely horrible. But again, their their uh, the Cardinals' confidence in him never wavered. They believed in him. They believed in his tools, his work ethic, and he's showing off for them this year. He's doing a really really great job, and uh, has been a fantastic player for them. So yeah. Uh, so far, he has a 118 weighted runs created plus this year, which means he's an 18 uh, he's an 18 uh, percent better than league average. Also, uh, his walk to K ratio is pretty good with a .35. Not even, is striking out just below 20 percent of the time, which is pretty good for a young player. A lot of the time, the striker percentage is very high, and that's what and uh, that's something you have to work on. But um, you know, he's doing very well in that regard. His BABIP is a little high at 3.54, but he's a fast player, being young and shortstop, so his BABIP should be a little higher than normal because he can run out grounders uh, you know, a lot uh, more than other people, and he's fast, so it's not like he's Salvador Perez with the kind of speed. So um, I think it's a more sustainable than other players would have. It's like Trey Turner having a high BABIP all the time. He's going to have one because he's the fastest player in the league. Also... Uh, with Mason Wynn, his ISO is at 134, which really has improved since last year, which was point, um, which was 0.066. Um, obviously, 134 is still not amazing, but you're never really going to be having a true power hitter with Wynn. He's going to be a, he's going to maybe hit 10, 15 home runs, but that's not really what his entire skill set is. His max exit velocity is up from five from last year, from 104 to 109. After that, his barrel percentage it's barely up, but still good enough, I'd say. Again, Harvard percentage is down technically, but has done much better in these past few appearances. So that's really, really good. So as you can see, he's doing a lot better with the bat. And yeah, he's pulling the ball a lot more, which is nice. Um, again, hard hit percentage has gone up in the um, you know bigger part of the season. So overall, Mason, Mason Wynn is becoming a star. 
with the bat. And as I said, we haven't even mentioned his defense, which of course is the big thing for him coming through the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Everyone knew how good of a defender he would be. The main thing would be, okay, is his back going to last in the MLB? And, you know, he has kind of a weirder swing for a baseball player, and he's lasted. So his defense becomes an extra thing now with, you know, I mean, you look at the defensive stats, his DRS is at 7. Um, you know, his o, um, his outs above average is also, um, you know, it's not the best at negative 3, but OAA sometimes is a little iffy with shortstop. So we're mainly focused on a DRS here, which is at 7. Very, very good. And also, defense is really one of the things where, as much as I don't like to say this, it's kind of a thing where you have to watch the game. There's not really a perfected defensive stat like there is with hitting and pitching and all that kind of stuff. It's mainly a watch the game stat, and if you watch a Cardinals game, you've seen that Mason Wynn is an amazing defender, really impacts the game with his glove and how slick he is there, so you know, really would, t would take the defensive stats to a grain of salt here. But yeah, overall, is becoming just a fully rounded player. Mason Wynn is, um, it, uh, Freddy was great with the glove, is now becoming amazing with the bat, and yeah, should become a franchise star for this Cardinals team, I think. You know, they are really lacking that right now. They had an amazing young hitting core these past few years, but those guys have either not lived up to expectations, been injured, or just not stuck with the team. So I think having a guy like Wynn who has pretty much exceeded expectations, something you really wanted. And, you know, this is a guy that was almost traded for Juan Soto um, a few years ago when he was Soto was originally traded by the Nationals. The Cardinals were one of the finalists with the Mariners, the Padres, and I think the Yankees as well. So, obviously, he ended up going to the Padres. But, you know, the, the Cardinals had the chance to end up trading him, make a dynamic three of Goldschmidt, Arenado, and Soto. And they kept on to win because they knew they, they were so confident in him. And, you know, so, obviously, I'll, I'll be frank, I would have traded him for Soto. Would have, I would probably trade anyone in the MLB for Soto. But still, their confidence in him is paying off right now. And he's done an amazing job. His work ethic is really, really showing out now with how well he has done. And... Props to him for being so, so good. I mean, you look at some of the other bats for this Cardinals team that are young. Jordan Walker is one of them who has been a top, top prospect in baseball for a long, long time and really has not lived up to the standards for the Cardinals right now in the MLB. He's back in AAA, you know, hitting well, but is in danger of becoming a 4A player. I still think has a lot of potential with this bat, but, you know, definitely has to work on it and try to end up being a star like the Cardinals thought he could be. So... Yeah, overall, should be very, very interesting to watch win over the next few years or so and end up seeing what does happen with him. So, yeah, uh, the impact he's had on the Cardinals season is honestly very big. I mean, this Cardinals team before wasn't a team I thought of as much with their pitching being in flux and their offense not performing well. But right now, they're in steady position in the second place of the NL wild card and don't look to be stopping. I mean, with Arenado and Goldschmidt kind of regressing, you needed a younger player to step in and fill in the reins, and Mason has done exactly that. Again, a 119 weighted runs creative plus is, isn't exactly what you want for a player, but for a player of wins caliber who plays defense so well and is a shortstop, it's fine. And overall, I think Wynn is a very, very exciting player, someone who is outstanding, and overall is just... Such a fun player to watch in the MLB and really has impacted this Cardinals team in a positive way. I mean, he's really helped this Cardinals outlook. And another thing is, I think the Cardinals pitching staff is really benefiting from him as well, which is something I don't think people mention a lot. A lot of ground ball pitchers on this team, I mean, Sonny Gray, uh, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, they all strike out people, yes, but they also get a lot of ground balls. And having a shortstop behind you who is as good at defending as win makes you so much more confident and really adds really adds to your pitching rotation as well. I'd say he's right up there with Lindor as the two top defensive shortstops in the entire league and really just adds a lot of confidence to your pitching staff when you have a defensive vacuum as good as him. You also have Arenado on the left side as well, so this Cardinals defense has been really impacted by Wynn as well, and that's something that is really huge that is underrated with Wynn's skill set. So just such a great player he is. Adds it a lot to this team, and again, with the Cardinals team kind of searching for an identity right now, with them just kind of being mediocre all over, being 36 and 36, I mean, the definition of mediocrity being right at 500, Win is a bright spot on this team, and it's someone that is very, very exciting uh, for this Cardinals team, for this Cardinals franchise, and is someone they should look to build around for the next few years or so. And, um, very, very excited to watch him with this team, 
and very interested to see where his career does go from here. Again, I think he was one of the only Cardinals prospects that really lived up to fully to his potential. And Jeff was very, very exciting to see with this Cardinals team and was an exciting, exciting player these past few years for them. So yeah, that was my fourth segment here talking about Mason Wynn and his breakout season for the St. Louis Cardinals and how well he has done for them. Moving into our fifth and final segment, which is going to be talking about the AL MVP rankings and um, what is currently going on uh, there with the with the MVP leaderboard. It came out today from uh, MLB.com, and I just did want to talk about uh, what is going on with that. So yeah, we'll be going over that, and we'll see you after the break for our fourth, fifth, and final segment. And uh, thank you, and bye.